안녕하십니까 이조은 치과의 손영희입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. Son Young-hee of Eager Dental Clinic. Today I want to talk about radiological evaluation for maxillary sinus surgery. The radiologic image that is used most frequently for diagnosis is panoramic image. If you compare panoramic image with periapical image, in the case of periapical image, the scope of what we can see is very limited and it takes longer to take panoramic images. In the case of periapical image, depending on how we take it, the amount of magnification can vary. Panoramic image provides a very consistent level of magnification. There can be many different anatomical structures and there can also be ghost images. In the case of superimposition of such, there can be difficulties in making a treatment plan. In the case of periapical images, such instances are not that frequent and it's an advantage. However, in order to take an overall view of the wide area, panoramic images are more favorable. So these two options are used very frequently and CT has become more common these days. A lot of treatment plan is made based on CT. In the case of panoramic image, you can look at the overall anatomy and you can also accurately look at the pathological conditions. The downside is that it has severe distortion and and there can be interpretation errors as well. As for bone width, it is very difficult to accurately determine. Clinically speaking, I think it's a very good tool to measure alveolar bone height. In the case of periapical image, the resolution is very high and we can look at it very precisely. There's not that much distortion. On the other hand, the scope of where we can make a treatment is very limited and we cannot anticipate bone width. Periapical images can be very useful when taking post-op images or looking at results. It has such clinical usages. Let's take a closer look at panoramic images. I think it's tough to talk about periapical images here. Panoramic images involves radiation within the established focal trough along the trajectory of the dental arch. Within the focal trough, the images can be gained. This is an X-ray image that can be gained in this way. It has rotation center. The subject stays in a still position and a film and the X-ray source rotates as images taken. Rotation center can be one or two. The rotation center itself slides and changes and images can be taken in various ways. Single real image is what we can gain frequently. The subject is within focal trough and this kind of image can be gained. Second, a double real image can be gained. Subject is outside the focal trough. Images of hard and soft palate, tongue, epiglottis, hyoid bone can be gained. As we all know, there can be ghost images, and this is in the case where there is anatomical structure is outside the focal trough, and where a very dense structure is very close to a radiation generator or film. Ghost image refers to a blurred image of a structure that is shown on the other side of the original position. As we're talking about radiology for sinus surgery, we need to know the following anatomic structures. Maxillary sinus, nasal cavity, maxillary tuberosity, zygomatic bone, floor of orbit, hard palate, soft palate, lateral plate of pterygoid process, and posterior wall of pharynx. 
we need to be able to detect these. On panoramic image, how would we be able to detect it? Because we're doing sinus surgery, what is most important is sinus. We can detect the maxillary sinus as shown. Next, the nasal cavity can also be detected easily. Within nasal cavity, there's nasal septum. Detecting septum is important, but we also need to determine whether there's any deviation of septum. If there's a septum deviation, we need to have in mind that there can be a certain level of osteum obstruction. As shown on panoramic image, you can see the nasal septum in diamond shape. Inferior nasal concha needs to be detected as well. It does not really have a actual clinical meaning, but there can be superimposition with a sinus, so we need to be aware of it. On this radiographic image, inferior nasal concha is shown here. This is huge. This is the inferior nasal concha. Next is maxillary tuberosity. The reason why we need to detect it is because in this area, we can check the posterior margin of the sinus. In this panoramic image, maxillary tuberosity is as shown. There is an area that goes up and we can also see the posterior structure of maxillary sinus accurately. Next is a coronoid process of the mandible where superimposition occurs with the maxillary tuberosity as shown. The maxillary sinus is here and coronoid process is here. Sinus floor and posterior border. You can see that superimposition can occur. Next is zygomatic bone. There is zygomatic bone and zygomatic process, and there's others. There's maxillary process as well. On this panoramic image, zygomatic bone is shown here, and zygomatic process is here. And zygomatic arch is like this. Next is orbit floor. This is a very high we can determine the superior border of the sinus. We can detect the floor of the orbit as shown. At times, we can see it. In other cases, we don't. There can be infraorbital canal as well. If you cram three-dimensional structures in 2D images, there can be superimposition between different anatomical structures, so we need to understand which is what. We also need to understand whether what kind of clinical meaning it holds. Next is hard palate and soft palate, and dorsal surface of tongue. These anatomic structures may not be so important, but we need to understand that superimposition can occur with the maxillary sinus, so we need to differentiate them and uh, detect the sinus appropriately. There's hard palate like this. This is the ghost image of hard palate. The ghost image of this hard palate is reflected on the opposite side. As for a soft palate, this is it. Dorsal surface of the tongue is like this. They all cross the sinus. Unless you have a panoramic image with clear sinus floor, if there is the slightest blurring, and if they are fully overlapping, then it can be very difficult to detect the sinus of floor. Next, let's look at the lateral plate of pterygoid process. This is over here. This is lateral plate of pterygoid process. 
and there's hyoid process of temporal bone. In the case of styloid process, we know very accurately, you can see here, this is pterygoal maxillary fissure area. It's the same on the other side. Lateral plate of pterygoid process is here. As we all know, the styloid process is over here. These are what we need to know. The last is posterior wall of pharynx. Perhaps uh, this is too much, but this is not a bony structure, so it's shown in very blurred image. This is uh, the posterior wall of a pharynx. When we take panoramic image and evaluate sinus for sinus surgery, we need to check whether there's any overlapping structures and check the sinus floor. What is really important is that on panoramic image, we need to identify the maxillary sinus. This is a very well-known method. I use this as well as Dr. Kim Yong-jin. Many dentists that I know use this method. This is a method to accurately identify the sinus. This involves identification of anterior and posterior border of maxillary sinus. We also need to separate the structures overlapping with maxillary sinus. Also, connect the anterior and posterior border, including septa, to identify sinus floor in an accurate manner. This is simple. First, we find the anterior and posterior border of maxillary sinus. If you look at this panoramic image, posterior border and anterior border are searched. After that, all structures that are overlapping with maxillary sinus are removed. Inferior nasal concha, heart, and soft palate dorsal surface of tongue, denominate line, and zygomatic process, so they're all removed. These are all removed. These are removed as well. Posterior and anterior surface are found, and these are all removed. We need to ignore all of this. After that, you connect the anterior and posterior border, including septum. By doing this, we would be able to identify the sinus of floor, which is what we want to identify. This is how you find sinus of floor. This is a tip. If you have a very clear panoramic image, you do not need to use these kind of method. You can just draw following it. But if there's a problem with the patient's position or image taking, or if the x-ray is old, then we can utilize this method very meaningfully. From posterior border, anterior border is connected and we can see the outline of the sinus. If you look at literature, in finding the septa within a maxillary sinus, many questions have been raised whether panoramic images are appropriate. This is a literature in 2002 and great number of false diagnoses can occur because of different overlapping structures we can get uh, the wrong sense and all these uh, overlapping structures have a radio peak line in determining accurate outline of the sinus so you will not be able to do it accurately with just a panoramic image hence we need to use a cbct for diagnosis as well, cone beam CT. There is cone beam CT and panoramic images when we compare them. Compare with panoramic images, CBCT have many advantages. However, there's disadvantages as well. If there is a metal, there can be many artifacts. Also, compared with panoramic images, so the cost is very expensive and radiation level is more compared with panoramic images. However, apart from these, 
it can be of、uh, very good help in getting correct diagnosis compared with it panoramic images. Compared with panoramic images, a CT serves as a much more useful tool for diagnosis. However, with panoramic images, you can look at the overall patient's situation and pathology. There's two types of CT. Fan beam CT is used in medical field, and cone beam CT is used in dental field. Depending on the shape of the beam, it may be fan beam CT or cone beam CT. When we compare between the two, the scanning time is much less compared with FBCT. FBCT needs to Scan everything, but because CBCT is the cone shape, scan time is very short. Because images can be taken within short period of time, the amount of radiation is much less compared with FBCT. There's more scattering with FBCT because the level of radiation dose is higher. However, with FBCT, you can see soft tissue more clearly. Comparatively, CBCT has poorly defined soft tissue. Let me give you my conclusion. Panoramic images and periapical view can be a very good diagnosis tool. However, panoramic images and intraoral radiographs are 2D images、uh, which. Reflect three-dimensional structures, so, so there can be issues with distortions or magnifications. In order to supplement this problem, we can use CT. Among the radiological diagnosis tools, CT shows most accurate results, and it's highly valuable. Especially when performing sinus surgery, CT can be particularly useful. My recommendation is when we compare panoramic images with CT, the septum of sinus can be accurately identified in CT. In panoramic images, there are many overlapping structures, so it is very difficult to identify the sinus septa. Compared with CT, it's difficult to determine where the septa is and how big and where it is exactly. In doing sinus surgery, CT is an imperative tool. If you don't have CT, take panoramic image. And if you have doubts, you can additionally take periapical images. This would help you reduce error in diagnosis. That is my recommendation. Today, in doing sinus surgery, we have looked at various considerations we need to make when looking at radiological images, such as panoramic images. We have learned about the different anatomic structures and how to identify sinus floor and sinus contour. If you're interested in more specifics, please refer to offline master course, and I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching.